Hey you guys, it's me Richard with Nightmares, Tears, Anyone. If you could talk to anybody no longer on this earth, who would it be and what would you say? Come back after the intro. Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Richard. So, uh, today it is Saturday, December, I think December 4th, something like that. But it is cold here in Sacramento. It is, uh, as you can tell, I have long sleeves on today. Yeah, it's been very cold. And I've had, well, I got over it today about 1 o'clock, but I had the most horrific flu for 24 hours, so it kicked my ass. But... Yeah, so it's, yeah, it has been cold here. So, before I get into today's review, if you like horror as much as I do, and you don't want to miss out on anything coming up, please hit either that like button there or that little subscribe button there. I think there's one in each corner, but yeah, I'll put the like button, the subscribe button right there. That little puff of smoke. Let's get into today's review. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about what I'm reading, what I'm struggling with getting through, uh, but this is going to be today's review. June 2006's Candles Burning by Michael McDowell and Tabitha King. Now, if you notice, Tabitha King's name is above this because actually Michael McDowell had only written the first couple hundred pages. Now, he died in 1996 due to complications from the AIDS epidemic. Uh, we miss him terribly. We miss his writing. I was lucky enough to meet the man in 1993 in Seattle at a, um, a book convention. And I got a couple of my books by him signed. Uh, it chokes me up. Yeah, he was pretty cool, actually. But um, he is survived by his longtime companion and his brother and his sister. Now, this book was started in 1996, as I said earlier. It came out in June of 2006, and uh, it has got 422 pages. Now, I'm going to read you guys the inside cover to this book, because I've owned this. Um, this is the first edition, and it came out in 1990, or 2006. You guys, I'm telling you what. If you've tried to read this book as many times as I have, I think I've literally started this book three times and I know it's terrible to do this you should never turn your pages over but I did I got to page 134 the farthest and I just couldn't do it after the third attempt and that was years and years and years ago I don't think I've picked this book up in probably wow um 10 years so it came available on screen uh, scribbed, and I said, you know what? I'm going to listen to it. Oh my God, you guys. If you've never been able to get into this book, the trick is to listen to the audio version. The audio book version is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. It is horrifying in the murder at the beginning of the book of young Callie Dakin's father. And uh, yeah, let me read you the inside cover. Known for his chilling Blackwater series, author Michael McDowell left behind the unfinished manuscript for, burn for candles burning upon his death in 1999. In the spirit of the ghost stories that Michael loved, Tabitha King is taken up where he left off, weaving a southern gothic fabric of murder, guilt, innocence, corruption, and survival in the voices of the living and the dead. Calliope, also known as Callie Dakin, 
is Daddy's little girl, much to the exasperation of her mother, Roberta Ann, who was born into the very old and prestigious Carroll family. Even though she married Joe Kane Dakin, and even though he owns a prosperous chain of car dealerships, Roberta Ann never lets him forget his humble origins, but Callie takes the brunt of her mother's contempt because she is a low-born Dakin through and through. She also hears things that maybe a little girl shouldn't hear and knows things a little girl should never know. Callie is just seven when her beloved father is tortured, murdered, and dismembered by two women with no discernible motivation. Callie and her mother find themselves caught up in an inexplicable inexplicable events that exile them to Pensacola Beach, where in a house that's a dead ringer for Callie's late great-grandmother's house, another woman awaits their presence, a woman who knows what Callie is and seeks to control her, for Callie is a force and someone wants to use her, someone who made the mistake of eliminating Callie's daddy. Without understanding that this particular little girl's love for her daddy will not be destroyed by mere death, nor will her daddy's love for her. Candles burning draws you into a mere tale as haunting and vivid as a summer nightmare and into the extraordinary imaginations of two most provocative authors. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Do not, do not, I don't give you any spoilers in my Goodreads account review, but I do mention what Callie is. So if you don't want to know what Callie is, do not comment or read my Goodreads review until you've read this book, if this interests you at all. Now, I loved, loved, loved this incredible book. Um, I won't read you my Bookreads account review, but I'm going to tell you something. This has got to be one of the most beautiful but so gory um, at the beginning in the, the, the torture murder of this poor girl's father was absolutely horrible. There's um, torture, there is uh, rape in this book. There's extreme racism because it does take place in the South to start out and it takes place in the 1950s. And the racism was terrible there. Um, they never, I can't remember the end use ever, ever used once, but there are very uh, bad racial slurs in this. Now, that does not point out um, as either author were racist because um, it is known that they both of them are, are not racist. But um, Michael McDowell, uh, yeah, just incredible, incredible, incredible author. One of my favorite all-time horror novelists of all time. And this book, people say, oh, you can tell, you know, where he quit writing and she picked it up. I thought the book was flawless. The book, the, the book, the book blended the two authors' writing talents and merged them seamlessly like a beautiful fabric. And sorry if that sounds very descriptive, but this book was absolutely gorgeous. It's sentimental. It's uh, creepy at times. Um, would I call it a horror novel? Um, no, I would call it a ghost murder thriller with very horrific scenes in it. But, um, it is a book that I will listen to again. If not, now that I know what it's about, I will probably pick up this beautiful book again and read it. Now, there are pictures of both Tabitha King and Michael McDowell on the back inside cover. Now, those of us know... <laughs> This is a very old picture. Tabby does not look like that at all anymore. Yes, she looks. <laughs> yes, yeah, she doesn't look like that anymore. Neither does Stephen King. Uh, however, there is a beautiful acknowledgement at the end of the book, written by Tabitha King to her, be her, her, her one of her best and dear friends, Michael McDowell. She dedicates the book to his longtime companion. Um, you guys. Like I said, if you've read the book, I would love to hear your comments below. I loved it. I just thought um, I thought it was incredible. I laughed my ass off. The narrator of this book is so spot on perfect and her voices and the way she speaks in Callie's voice, you will laugh your ass off. Now, I have five sisters and growing up, I remember when, you know, 
they turned from little girls into women. And you guys, let me tell you what, Callie Dakin, her, her, her nickname is Callie for her, her full her full name is Calliope. And when you find out why her name is Calliope, it has a big part to do with the book. Um, it did, it made me cry. Um, not sob, but it did. In in happiness and sadness, my eyes welled with tears at the end. And um, if Michael McDowell were still alive, um, even, well, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to read you the very, 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 very top part of my uh, Goodreads review. I won't read what I wrote in my review. Let me grab my tablet really quick. So this is, this is what I wrote. Um, I said, if you had the gift to talk to someone no longer on this earth or in your life, what would you say and who would it be? I have thought of this many, many times in my life, but now I think I would walk up to author Michael McDowell and look him in the eye and say, quote, thank you, my friend, for taking me on this gorgeous and hysterically funny at times journey with of Callie Dakin. And quote, unquote, if you have tried and tried to read this book as many as as many read this book as I have so many times, your trick to getting into it is to listen to this new and beautiful yet gross and creepy at times literary classic. This, I I loved it. I um I just wish I could have read it when it was popular. Um, when it first came out, it had a lot of hit and miss reviews, but but every book does, uh, and especially when um, a book written by such a well-known horror author as Michael McDowell is picked up and finished by such a worldwide phenomenon at the time as Stephen King, people are going to think, oh God. But this was not Tabitha's first writing venue. Her One of her first books, and still one of my favorite horror thrillers, is this one, Small World. This is the very first edition that I've had since the book came out. This was the Assignate original book. $3.50. My God, if books ever cost that much anymore. Um, this book came out. This was a Signet book. And we used to love those Signet books that had all the lists, you know, to check the box and send in your $1.50 for, to get this copy of the book. But it's dedicated for, for the boogeyman I love. Yeah. For the boogeyman with love. Of course she's talking about her husband. I'm sure she is. So this came out in 1981. Those of you that have never read this book or even heard of it, pick it up. It's a great disturbing and very graphic in parts of sexual mutilations. Um, so that is my review of 2006's... 2006's? Yeah, 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, June 6, 2006. That's right. Duh, God. Um... Uh, the Candles Burning by Michael McDowell and Tabitha King. What I am still reading, and I've been reading this for almost three weeks. I'm still only on page 243. Ugh, is David Silva's Come 13. My God, you guys. This is such a slow burn. But at page 190, um, it's finally hooked me in, and I'm actually really, really liking it. Uh, it came out in 1988 by... Uh, Leisure Books. Very cool cover artwork. But, oh my god, you guys. I still have... Well, I still have that much more to go. Like I said, I'm on 243. Mm. And there's 348 pages. So you guys have a still... I still have a 140 pages to go. So, my god. I gotta get through it. So, you guys, hey... Like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, if you haven't done so already, and you love horror as much as I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe. <laughs> the hiccup so bad, you guys, sorry. Don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button right there. Ring the bell so you get notifications of when I post another horror slash thriller or even a tearjerker book review. And you guys, as always, let's pick up a scary book and let's get scared, you guys. And like I say all the time, Live your life like a book. Life is too short. Just remember, don't ever turn that last page. Because once you do, 
it's over you guys uh what else did i want to say pick up candles burning it's really really good and if you have libby everybody should have libby um however christine uh christine randazzo she said she couldn't get libby through her local library where she lives in texas so i don't know hopefully she got that problem solved um and what else oh a shout out to B, B Reads, Brittany, up in Vancouver, BC. They've had horrible weather, horrible weather, um, and they've got terrible COVID outbreaks. Um, hopefully she's doing fine. I have not heard from her. And as always, like always, a uh, big huge hello to Jeff DeGordick, Jerry Roth, uh, oh my God, Brandon Burnson, Solomon Petchers, uh, oh my goodness. Um, a Lopez Jr. and so many more, but with with Christmas right around the corner, you guys, hey, Merry Christmas, everybody! But you'll see me before then. Just remember, pick up a scary book. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. If you did like what you see, give me a thumbs up, please. And hey, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Watch out. There's bad people out in the world, especially in Pensacola, Florida. And not really. I have friends that live down there. Take care, you guys. Bye.